Welcome back. This is the fourth episode in the series. This is some repeat footage from the end of last episode for comparison against what you're about to see. Because on day 260, 149 days later, it looks zombified. Coloration's all off if you compare it especially to the orange seedling in the center of this pot, which had an ill fate in the end. Granted, this was all filmed at dusk on a cloudy day, but you can see the green color is all off. It's not there. The outsides of these two blades, two outer ones, is... Um, yeah, I don't know how to describe that color, but it's a sickly looking color. By a day 266, middle blade looked larger and healthier. I had watered sparingly throughout this entire series up until this point because as was the case in my Joshua Trees growing series, 4 out of 10 germinated and out of those 4 seedlings of Joshua Trees, uh, 3 of them quickly succumbed within weeks to root rot or was it maybe a few months at the most. So on day 280 I decided to indulge in some flood watering which was you know, just my fancy way of describing using this watering can with a liter capacity to thoroughly soak the entire pot. This is a, I wouldn't say a small pot, but it's a medium pot, uh, smaller than all my other pots that I'm currently using for plant series. With potting mix, everything shifts around like this when you use anything that has the nozzle capacity higher than a squirt bottle. So all the dirt shifted around, plant itself shifts around which is very bad for the root system. Some plant root systems can't tolerate that. I don't know if this is one of those cases, but nobody up until this point was really interested in viewing this century plant growing series, so I had nothing to lose. So on day 288, with some of my plants, I decided to try this aspirin treatment by buying some low dose chewable aspirin, 81 milligrams per pill. Normally it's 325, which people say on the internet they use as a dose in one gallon of water. And that translates to this low dose of 81 milligrams of aspirin in one liter of water. So this watering can can fit almost a liter, slightly over 900 mLs. I'm trying this aspirin dissolved in water idea for all of my plant series concurrently because one of my viewers recently suggested this. I looked up the idea on the internet and saw some, I wouldn't call it evidence, but anecdotal evidence, uh, videos, blogs, and whatnot that suggested that aspirin could do great things for my plants. Well, I mean, there is science behind it because the aspirin will be metabolized by plants into salicylic acid, a plant hormone that's naturally concentrated in willow bark used as a painkiller. So at this point you can see the base of the outer leaf that's smaller on the right side. That thing doesn't look good. It looks like it's about to rot. Although the green color has come back, it's a very late in spring. So there's been a lot more sunshine on this balcony but I think the watering the flood watering really helped so I'm gonna do some more flood watering but yeah getting back to the aspirin um, it could potentially act as a hormone that will absorb in minute quantities into the foliage itself and also get into the root system it's supposed to help prevent root rot um, make the plants resistant to bugs and diseases and sort of act as a cure-all although I'm sure you know fertilization is another part of the equation as well as sunlight carbon dioxide etc so I'm doing more uh, pseudo flood watering just locally here to see if I can get an additional response this is aspirin water though so I imagine hopefully that it will stop this from getting root rot with all this watering that's definitely a concern. I didn't want to take risks at the beginning of this series with just one plant. So you could see the whole plant was shifting around just then and I'm using a squirt bottle for a gentler application to wash off the dirt particles. It's also annoying to have sand in the pot. So I'm going to use some 
fertilizer now that it's been a few days since I applied the aspirin water on day 297 macronutrients of plants are nitrogen potassium and phosphorus compounds in useful compound forms these are the macronutrients that plants need a lot of plants need nitrogen fixing bacteria to get their nitrogen in the soil some plants have a symbiotic relationship in their root nodules and whatnot with nitrogen fixing bacteria that can just directly pull molecular nitrogen out of the air and create compounds out of it that plants can use so it comes in these blue crystals I've had this package forever it doesn't go bad or anything and I'm dissolving it with small amounts of aspirin water to soak it into the soil and disperse it although it's often said that you don't want to apply fertilizer in concentrated form to the foliage because it'll cause burns it'll absorb in there so I'm doing a lot of rinsing to get rid of that and that should render the leaves squeaky clean again so back what I was saying about sand is uh, grains will get between the blades of these succulent plants which is really annoying because you're worried that they'll cause scratches between the leaf blades as they grow and expand and also just cause other developmental problems with the plants so the sand was originally in there just to prevent fungus gnats it was a layer on top so I'm doing all this rinsing that should do the trick you know it looks like it sort of forms an organic cup in the middle but the moment I stop this stream of fluid it drains very quickly on day 301 more aspirin watering is done and you can see the response of the plant from all this aspirin watering it looks far more green uh, far more succulent and lush than it did before so we're doing pretty good um, even with a squirt bottle watering, if I do it too violently, uh, dirt particles get everywhere. So I have to just be careful. I could try to brush some of that stuff aside, but then I would weaken the support around the base. and It could potentially shift around, which is probably bad. But in the case of this century plant, we haven't seen any signs of bad things being caused by that. No damage, definitely and the blade tips were burned before but with all that water swelling they seem fine now so day 303 this is the first time I'm trying my vitamin idea so vitamins contain all the micronutrients a plant can need uh, this is for me obviously a human so you know we don't necessarily have the same needs in terms of micronutrients I'm not sure that plants need all those vitamins but I have seen blogs on the internet that say um, vitamin solutions in pretty dilute concentrations too because really concentrated ones can be very expensive. But vitamin pills are cheap. I'm crushing this up with pliers as a demo, putting in a squirt bottle and then I'll put in some water and s start shaking it to mix it. So that makes it an easy vitamin solution. Granted, there are some insoluble things in there that are lipid soluble. People talk about that. And in relation to vitamins and how if you don't eat fat or oil with your vitamins, then you're not getting all of them. But anyway, uh, for plants, you know, in their natural environment, they don't really encounter oils, lipids in the soil. So I'm figuring all they need are the water soluble vitamins and minerals, all those trace amounts of metals you know whatever nickel iron manganese uh, the pill itself is made of calcium carbonate so that should provide for tons of that which succulents are said to need a lot of to build cell walls so yeah after this uh, vitamin application you know the first application was four days ago this is day 307 you know I'm applying it again and the plant looks yet bigger leaves have swollen up more the fourth blade is coming out and it's bigger it was kind of nested in there for a while and it seemed very small so like with my Joshua tree it seems like you know sometimes there's hope of rapid continuous growth but then you see a leaf just stuck in there for days or even weeks 
and you start to lose heart again. But this has been a lot of progress since the beginning of the video. Definitely compared to the last video, the coloration is completely different now. The blades act as water storage organs. They swell up like the blades of aloe. And the base of that outermost leaf is actually, you know, it doesn't look sickly. Maybe it's kind of obscured now that everything is swollen and it's been pushed underground. But, you know, it's interesting how the, you know, the big leaf on the left of what we're looking at right now, it's serrated, whereas, you know, the small one on the left, big one on the right aren't. So are those cotyledons? I don't know. But there's a fourth blade coming out, and it looked a lot thinner a few days ago. So I assume the plant is doing very well. It's soaking up as much water as it can. I was worried about overwatering with my succulent plants, and as a result, I didn't see much growth for a really long time because I was underwatering out of that fear of killing all my plants with root rot. So now that I know that this is very uh, flood tolerant essentially I can water as much as I want at least that's what I think for the time being here's another angle you can see the interesting serrated spiral sort of looks like a missile head it's very aesthetic so I think I got the hang of growing um, this century plant here's some macro footage I definitely think I can get a lot more growth out of this going forward and not spend a whole century to grow something at an imperceptibly slow rate like I did for the first I think six months or whatever you know first nine months maybe so I'm just spraying with some distilled water in the end to wash off any possible vitamin residue I don't know that it would be harmful like it would be with a fertilizer but it doesn't hurt definitely to be a little bit more cautious Please check out my Century Plant playlist and stay tuned for episodes in the future.